even after we got the touchdown confirmed, and there, there's even the picture up on the screen, and I'm like, oh, just wait, wait, I still, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. I get goosebumps every time. I don't know if it's the music or if it's just the flashbacks to the, the nightmares of everything that could have gone wrong that night, but it, I'm glad that it worked well, and it, it was a lot of work from a lot of people for a long time to make that make that come off. That was actually one of the exciting things about this particular landing. Unlike the previous landings that weren't quite as televised and promoted as much, everyone who was there watching was feeling the intensity of the event as we were in the, in the uh, control room as well. And that, once I saw this after landing and saw all the reactions of all the people who are watching all around the world, that's part of, you know, it really inspired me. And I'm like, wow, they were, they were feeling this too. Relative to Mars, we're going five and a half kilometers a second. So we're going pretty fast. So a few millimeters per second difference will mean the difference between yeah, landing in the targets or not. And basically, the, uh, the air that we had on the surface was only a few hundred meters. And that's after the three and a hundred, three, 350 million mile trip to, to Mars. Yeah, I think the, anal the analogy, if I remember correctly, is something like a quarterback here throwing a ball to the receiver in like Florida right. and, and hitting that mark. And landing on home plate, but just, <laughs> just off to the center of home plate. Uh, I was wondering, like, what was it like for in high school were you picked on like being because I'm sure you were pretty smart and I didn't know like did you do well and then like now that you're making science and math and engineering and technology cool like what would your advice be for like high school students uh, I will I will start to say I'm not particularly I was not particularly the best student in high school um, I'm very fortunate to uh, have slowly improved with time um, <laughs> Math was not actually ever my strength. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, was, I was picked on in school not so much for being nerdy, I think, as um, I had, I'm, you know, I'm an Iranian-American, so I had trouble in school mostly being an Iranian-American, not for, I think, for being nerdy. Um, it probably helped that I wasn't particularly large and easier to pick on. Um, but no, um, I, I don't think for being nerdy was that bad. And I gotta say, like, it just seems like it keeps getting better for, for nerds out there. I mean, like, you think about events like this, um, it's kind of awesome now. Be, being good at math and science is now cool. That's the new Tony Stark thing to do. It's, you know, <laughs> this, they don't have this, you know, maybe it's a different time back then. I was picked on, but it had nothing to do with being good at math or science. So, um, but just stick with whatever you want to do. I mean, whether it's math, science, or art, or history, or whatever your passion is, just do it. One of the things that JP has a history of is the Lucky Peanuts. It's a story that back from the 1960s when all of the Ranger missions were failing and failing. Rangers they, one through six. They, yeah. We're trying to get to the moon with, and they were just having trouble. Um, one day they had, a, when they had their failure, they were, one of the engineers joked, it must have been the peanuts that engineer, engineer so-and-so was eating. And so from that point on, at all the critical events, they, they cracked open the Lucky Peanuts, whether it was a launch or future landings or orbit insertions to different planets, and the, which is a contradictory to engineers, which are all about logic and reason, <laughs> but we're not going to tempt the fates. So it was just a long history. So for all the critical events, including Curiosity Landing Night, we basically had the Lucky Peanuts. <laughs>